This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter from the beautiful city of Atlanta. Her name is Skylar Reed. Miss Reed, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? Great. Thank you. Uh, welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. Um, now, you just you just released a new album uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, April 16th? Yes. Um, called Are We There Yet, which I, I love, by the way. Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk about that because I have a couple couple questions about that. Um, but before we do, uh, tell us about Skylar Reed. Well, I've always been a singer. I've always loved singing since I was a child. I always knew I wanted to make it my life. Um, so... I started singing like for family and family functions and then in school choirs and church choir, church praise team. Um, and then I went to school and studied classical uh, vocal performance. And um, I actually moved to LA and pursued my career out there for a few years. And then in like 2017, I moved here to Atlanta and been continuing my journey and everything. Um, and I started a business where I vocal coach and teach piano. So I still am very active in singing, um, performing and stuff, but also just like involving my whole day with music. So it's awesome. Okay, great. Um, now I read your bio and from what I read, your mom was a singer too? Yes, she uh, had a beautiful voice. Did she sing professionally or just around town or in church? Uh, no, she didn't sing professionally, um, but she did sing at her graduation. Like she had a graduation solo. And then when I graduated, I had a solo at my graduation. So that's like a cool thing, but yeah. Okay. And is that what um, your mom singing? Was that, was that what inspired you to, to sing? And perhaps Initially, sing yeah. Yeah, I think um, she was definitely the one who introduced me to great music, great singers like Whitney and Anita Baker, Lauren Hill. And she would sing a lot around the house and she sounded so pretty. And I'm I'm sure that's why <laughs> I sing. She was a huge influence on me. All right. Do you have siblings that sing as well or it's just you? Um, so after my mom passed, I was adopted by my aunt and uncle. And um, my cousins, now my brothers, uh, they are one of them is an actor who also has a nice voice and he sang and um, did plays and things like that and short films. And the other one, um, he has a nice voice as well, but he just sang in choir. So we all like grew up singing in choir and everything. Um, but I'm the only one that like really am the, the singer out of the family. <laughs> okay. All right. Fair enough. Now you said you went to school for uh, music. What uh, yeah. I'm assuming you're referring to college. What college did you go to? Uh, I went to Virginia State University. Oh, Virginia State. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then after college, did, is that when you made the move to uh, Los Angeles or did you go back yeah. to Atlanta or? Right after, right after. And I'm from Virginia. So um, right after college, like literally probably a week or two after I graduated, I was out of there. I was on a flight to LA. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, tell us about your experiences in LA. I'm sorry, how uh, long were you in LA for? I was in LA for about three and a half mm -hmm. years, maybe four, something like that. Um, so LA was a, it was a learning experience, like as a whole. I wasn't an artist yet. I just, I knew I loved R&B soul, like I grew up on it, but then I also had this classical background. I also studied a little bit of jazz in school. So when I went to LA, I actually started um, singing in operas and like going that route. And I was doing that for maybe a year and a half, um, doing different performances and stuff here and there. With that, I started doing open mics and um, just gigging R&B stuff. And that's where I really learned how to perform because I would just get out there and get in front of people and like sing and, you know, coming from a classical background where you 
you stand and you don't really move. It was like a learning experience of learning how to move on stage and just like really entertain and stuff like that. So LA was a huge just learning experience. I performed a lot in LA. Um, I ended up getting booking my own shows at bars and clubs and things like that, different events and stuff and did a couple of release events uh, for projects and whatnot. Um, but yeah, LA was great. Okay. Were you, um, were you trying to, um, to get a record deal when you were in LA or you were just trying to just test the waters and see? Um, I don't think I ever really intentionally wanted to get a record deal. I'm still not sure. Um, I was still, I was like going the indie route and I really just wanted to get recognized. And, um, I was actually thinking more business minded and thinking like if I were to get a job at a record label and like learn the ins and outs and like move up that way. But I ended up like interning for a music publishing company, interning for um, a like smaller indie label and stuff like that. So yeah, <laughs> I've always been kind of business minded. Okay. Um, and then so you left LA and you went back to, uh, you went to Atlanta? I went to Atlanta, drove across the country um, and went to Atlanta. And well, yeah, went home and then like, moved down to Atlanta, went home to Virginia for a couple of weeks and then moved down to Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. I know Atlanta has a lot of, um, uh, artists. Um, oh, is yeah. that one of the reasons why you moved to Atlanta because of the possible exposure for, uh, for your music? Uh, yeah. In a sense. Um, I think it, Atlanta caters to the R and B genre more i feel i know la like there's everyone everyone wanted to be a star it's just different like la it just seems like everyone was doing like certain genres and like some genres weren't really that popular unless in like certain places um so i just feel like atlanta was more acceptable to the r&b soul genre and just like black music it just yeah so I, I liked it I actually came to visit one summer and I did a couple shows I did like a little tour from like EP I did um that I released and I did a little summer tour and just did some shows and I really liked the reception I got like it was people are really here for the music and really supported artists um I felt like in LA uh, there were a few times I would be at events and doing gigs and sometimes it would just be other artists like mostly other artists performing for each other um and it was just like overpopulated I think mm. okay <laughs> Um, okay. Well, uh, thanks for sharing that. Now let's talk about your, uh, latest EP, uh, called, are we there yet? Yeah. I'm just curious. I have to ask, is that a play on ice cubes movie? Are we there yet? Or, um, not at all. Wasn't even thinking about ice cube. <laughs> I created it, but yeah, it's just a song, uh, that I wrote and I, I just liked the message of it. And I felt like all the other songs that I selected for the project kind of dealt with, um, being on a journey or some sort of like storyline and stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Um, let me ask you, since we sort of delved into that a little bit, um, did you, I know you say that um, artists like Whitney Houston were uh, sort of influences on you. Did you sort of pattern your, your singing style after one particular um, artist or is it a, so a combination of uh, multiple people or anyone at all? That's a good question. Um, not intentionally doing anything. Like I definitely have not, I, I wasn't trying to sound like anybody necessarily, but I think studying classical music, that definitely came across a lot in my earlier projects. And I've been trying so hard to like break away from that. Um, Whitney Houston, Jill Scott, um, Anita Baker, I study like their songwriting, I study their lyrics. Um, and just like I write my songs. So I'm really trying to like create melodies that are, you know, just soulful. I don't necessarily uh, think any particular one, but I think as a whole, just like everybody I've been influenced by, like Destiny's Child, I grew up on them. So even if I play some of my songs, like for a friend, they'll be like, oh, that sounds like Destiny's Child. That line sounds like something Destiny's Child. And it's like, I didn't, you know, try to do that. It's just, it's just in me. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, just a bunch of people that right. I love. When I listen to your music, I hear um, a combination of R&B and some jazz. Um, <laughs> was jazz, uh, an influence on you or is it just accidental yes. jazz in your music? 
Yes. Um, for a short time when I spent with my dad, um, he would play jazz in the car, like like smooth jazz and like Anita Baker stuff and just things like that. When I got to college, I studied jazz for about a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, and just off to the side from classical. And then since then, I went on to like just continue my studies. So I like most recently studied Billie Holiday. Um, I've always loved Ella Fitzgerald. Um, she's always been my go-to for jazz standards and everything. Um, so yeah, and uh, Sarah Vaughn, I've been studying her. Just a lot of different um, stuff independently that I've been looking at. And then also playing piano, just trying to play different jazz standards and stuff and kind of get that sound in my head. Jazz is definitely like a undertone that I have that I don't know. I, I didn't grow up listening to a lot of jazz, but it's just something that kind of is my thing, my vibe. Okay. Well, you definitely can hear it to me in your music. And uh, I think it's great because I don't, I don't know if you really hear that a lot anymore. Certainly mm -hmm. not in mainstream. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so uh, kudos to you for that. Now, let's finish talking about Are We There Yet? Did you... Um, did you do most of the writing or all the writing on this uh, EP? Or most not? of the writing. I had a writing partner, uh, Jessica Lois. So um, there's a studio out here called Bass Parlor. It used to be out here, but the pandemic happened and whatnot. But um, Bass Parlor was a studio that I taught vocal workshops at, and Jessica would teach um, production workshops and um yeah, production stuff, songwriting stuff. So we kind of connected from that being in that area of the studio. And uh, we just connected and we scheduled a session to like write something. And we went over there and we just wrote. And I really, really love like the first session of just us writing. And I'm, I'm usually not the type of person to collaborate with other people. Usually every, all my other projects, I just write my own songs. I just do my own thing and don't listen to anybody. I just do me. But this one, I was like, I really want to incorporate other people and other minds and whatnot. So after that, I asked her to, you know, I liked it. I wanted to do a whole project with her. So we kind of got together and just started working on music. And um, basically, most of the songs uh, we wrote together, there was one song that I wrote by myself, and that was Wrong Turn. Um, and some most of the songs I would write, um, two songs that we actually sat in and wrote, that was Are We There Yet? and Superpower. And that's probably the two songs that stretched me the most as a songwriter, because I'm, I'm she's, she really pushed me to like think outside the box and whatnot. Um, Don't Disappear, I wrote um, on my own in 2019, uh, like way before we got together, but then she helped me like make it even better. Um, and then pieces of me I wrote on my own, um, but she helped me make it even better. So yeah. Okay. Um, is that something you foresee yourself doing uh, in further projects? Uh, maybe collaborating with uh, yeah. more, more people or? Most definitely. Um, it's an experience I've always wanted to have, but I just, um, I don't know why I never really went and, you know, done that before, but I'm glad I did. Even with working with musicians, um, it's all, it was always a dream of mine to like work with musicians. Um, I remember seeing this video of like Jill Scott singing with the orchestra and Aretha Franklin's done it. Like so many, you know, great singers that we know have done it, but, you know, coming from classical background, that's something that I'm like, wow, I want to do that. But in this music that I did, I did have a, a cellist. So that was like, you know, my little taste of like having some like classical stuff. And we of course had musicians, like real music, real basses, um, drummer and guitarist and everything. And that was really cool. Cause I really feel like it, the music feels more like live. And I feel like my voice sounds better on music with real instruments. It's just a different vibe. Okay. Um, well, I love your EP. I think it's, I think it's great. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. VGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Our album. Uh, now, this is not your first um, release, uh, although this is the first one I received, but you also had some other releases as well. I think three prior um, mm -hmm. projects. Uh, mm -hmm. Talk to us about those. 
The first one was um, I Keep Dreaming, which was really a compilation. I didn't know what I was doing when I did that. Um, I was just young. It was my first project. It was like in 2015, 2016. Um, I did a music video for the single I'm Doing It. Um, it was a really awesome time of like being in L.A. and, you know, just went to a studio and just like spend all this money, like getting it done myself. Like I didn't know, I didn't know <laughs> as much as I know now. So I was just, you know, just trying to get it done. Like just, you know, I want to have an album, I want to have a music out there. And I just pulled songs. It was no real concept. I just like pulled songs that had written for the past couple of years. Cause I've been writing songs since I was 12. I, I was definitely a songwriter way before I was a singer, um, like an artist, but um. Anyway, so there's that. I keep dreaming. After that, um, the second e that was an LP that I keep dreaming. The EP I did next was Movement of a Sunflower. Um, that was mostly produced. I think it was all produced um, by Sebastian Francis and Soso Productions. And um, did that in I don't, I'm really bad with years. It was probably like 2017, 2016. 2016, let's say that. Um, and that was uh, me kind of figuring it out, you know, really in the R&B vibes, more hip hop R&B style. My last EP was Descended Crowns. Um, that was special for me. That was my first project in Atlanta. And I have this song on there called Baptized. I just feel like I really got much better with my songwriting um, and just more um, vulnerable in my songwriting and the music, I, of course, I continue to use beats, but I try to, um, I guess, just like use more different producers and stuff rather than just one. And um, yeah, there's that. And I that was a good project. I liked it. It was very diverse in sound. Like there's, it's like an EP. So it's just, it's kind of like, feels like a compilation. It's not the most consistent, um, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it was all a learning process, all of those experiences. Okay. And how were they received by the... Uh the public or your fans? Um, they were received good, very well. Um, the first one, there was a song called Stormy Weather that was really cool. And I, I performed that a lot um, in LA, like events and whatnot. And uh, the next one, there was a song called Take Me Home that I, that was like the single off of it. That was really um, a good song that I sang and people like that one. Um, my last one, I got a lot of good feedback. Um, there's a song called Say My Name on it featuring Sebastian Francis. Um, and that seems to be like the most played people like that a lot, um, just streamed and everything. Um, but people hit me about Baptized. Like they really like connect with that one because it's like definitely more personable and like more my stream of like who I am as an artist. I feel like I put songs on there I feel like with that project, I learned the difference of I can write songs, but I don't need to sing every song that I write. So there were songs on there like Trainer that I love, but you know it doesn't necessarily go with um, with my sound. It's not like the best showcase of my voice and all of that as as an artist. Um, but yeah, anyway, people responded well. And with Are We There Yet, people have been sending me really nice messages and DMs and texts, and it's been really really nice, good positive response from. Okay. Let me just touch on something you just said. Um, you said that even though you can write a song, maybe not, maybe not necessarily perform it. Perform it. Do you um, do you write for other people? I do not. Not yet. Um, it's it's not necessarily something I'm trying to do. If it happens, it happens. I, I'm more so I'm looking, what I am interested in is like sync licensing and um, maybe writing songs for placements on TV and film. So that might be a cool outlet for like writing songs that aren't fit for me, but I can sing anything so I can, you know, do it that way. Um, but yeah, no, not not yet. Okay. Um, now I know we're, um, we just mentioned that your latest um, EP or album was just released on the 16th. I know we're smack dab in a, in a global pandemic, has that affected um, your music at all or the release of new music? Or I know you can't perform really, but how is that? Has that played a part or maybe not? Yes, um, it played a huge part because uh, we were in the middle of production when the pandemic happened. Like we were literally almost 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 done uh had a couple more sessions left had a few more recording sessions left but once the pandemic happened i couldn't record at studios i had to buy my own mic i had to figure out how to record myself which i already kind of knew i already record my own demos and stuff but just having to like go through that process um having um jessica vocal producer she's a vocal coach and she went to berkeley and stuff and she's really talented 
talented. So she was vocal producing me like on FaceTime and stuff, like while I'm over here trying to record um, and just getting the sessions with the musicians. We had to redo some stuff. It was just, it was, it elongated the process. Um, and I wanted to put this project out like in fall, <laughs> but the pandemic definitely slowed everything down. Um, with not being able to perform, that's like what hurts the most for me um, because I love performing. Like that's like my favorite thing to do. Um, and I normally will perform like on a regular, um, but I haven't performed in over a year um, in person um, because of that. So I decided to do like this NPR inspired, like NPR Tiny Desk inspired um video um ep visual um and that was my way of showing like okay i get to perform and i have a band and stuff so i did that and released that on the 16th and whatnot but um yeah the performing i feel like it definitely for me i mean i've gotten a lot of promo and stuff which has been such a blessing but for me i don't feel it i don't you know feel the in the initial response from people listening i don't know like what songs hit good and because i'm not there I don't, I don't see them listening i can't you know, sing it and, and see their reaction. So it's just definitely different for me. Um, I can't wait to get back on stage. Okay. Now you mentioned a NPR tiny desk kind of inspired. Is that on YouTube or where, where can people? It's on YouTube and it's on my website, skylarie.com. Okay. Um, so like I said, we're in this pandemic. Are you, Besides doing the little performances that you're doing, um, have you done the you know, Facebook Live, the Instagram Live, those kind of things or? Yes, um, I've done a couple concerts on Instagram Live and lately I just, um, trying to be more active on that just go in there and practice because i'm a vocal coach i like showing like the process of like learning songs and whatnot so i'll go in there and actually like practice and show like people like my practice strategies and whatnot and do that um i do cover videos and things like that i just do what i can right now um and i've done um a virtual uh performance um so yeah some okay. virtual performances since the pandemic okay let me uh let me back up a little bit and talk about uh, are we there yet and you mentioned that you wanted to release that in the fall of, I'm assuming last year. Um, mm -hmm. How long did it take you to actually complete um, complete the album from start to finish? Um, like a year and a half. May, well, um, I would say two years because I wrote Don't Disappear like way before. So I would say about two years. Okay, mm -hmm. fantastic. Yeah. Um, hopefully, um, you know, this year you can get out and promote and yeah. This great music you have. Uh, mm -hmm. I know you just released this one. Are you working on new stuff to release maybe this year or later on this year or what's yeah. the plan going forward? Um, most definitely. Um, it when, when I'm like about to release a project, it's very hard to like create and like get in the vibe of like new music because I just like want to get the old music out. Um, and I feel like since I released it, I've been so freed and like refreshed and relieved. Like I just feel like I've been creating like way, like way better stuff. And and when I started producing more, um, which is something I started in this pro pro process of Are We There Yet? I never like produced before, but I always wanted to. So Jessica like gave me the opportunity to like you know like be a part of that process of producing and whatnot. Um, so I've been doing that more on my own and um, working with another artist, um, Jamila, that is awesome, pianist and whatnot. Um, so I've been working with her on producing new music and hopefully something will be out soon. I'm definitely, I have songs like that I can't wait to share. So. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of producing and writing songs, let me ask you, uh, what's your writing process? Do you just write on a whim or do you have to be in that mindset or how do you, how do you create? Okay. Um, the old me would be like, I need to be inspired. I can't write until I feel something. Um, but the new me that's trying to be more disciplined and like, you know, just be more on top of my artistry and my craft. I actually set schedule time. So like today I had a break um, in between lessons, um, teaching and whatnot. And I just scheduled time songwriting to a beat that I made yesterday. So I like make a beat, like try to write to it. Um, 
And yeah, I just schedule time. And usually like I like incense or candles. Like if I'm home, I like have my incense and candles or one or the other. And uh, like dim the lights, have my tea, like just get a vibe and be calm. Um, here I have like a mood light, like a it changes colors and I have my big light can dim and stuff. Um, and yeah, just like get into a vibe and just relax. I do take notes sometimes. I always get ideas when I'm driving. So like write a quick note. Um, of like a song idea and sometimes i'll stem from that other times i just let the music move me sometimes i like to sit at the keys and like create chords and just like feel it out and then come up with a song and then like produce it later it just depends but yeah okay so you go all in the uh the lights the incense yeah all in it okay <laughs> i've never heard that but <laughs> right. um, i have five um Skylar, tell people where they can find you on uh, social media, how they can reach out to you. They can find me on all social media at I am Skylar Reed. On all the um, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, and Instagram Twitter. Twitter. I'm really, I'm really big on Instagram. That's my fave. But yeah. Okay. And, and you YouTube also, as well. Okay. And do you also have a website, right? Yes. SkylarReed.com. Okay. SkylarReed.com. All right, Skylar. One more, one more question here and then I'm going to let you go. Um, what do you hope people get out of your music? So I hope that they are always inspired. Like that's, that's the thing. Um, one of my students hit me with a text one day saying like that my, my song, like seeing me like being artists and writing and listening to my music is very, very inspiring. And that's really all I want. Um, I have a lot of songs on this project. Usually all of our projects have at least one song that's like, motivating this song, this um, project to have Are We There Yet, which I think really, um, if you listen to the lyrics, it's kind of motivational. And if you listen, um, Superpower, most definitely motivational. Pieces of me, so, super inspiring. Just like trying to give people like the light at the end of the tunnel. If they're, we're all in a pandemic, I talk about that in the Pieces of Me song. Um, and even with love songs, like, you know, just like you're gonna find love someday, just like be happy and stuff. So just inspired and peace and um yeah i mean since you are a vocal coach i guess you you have firsthand knowledge of the of the influence that you have on other people so i think that's great um and they can look up to you and see what you're doing and hopefully you know follow the same path yeah um skylar anything else you want to add before we uh, before we end this interview um let me see Thanks so much for having me. Um, please just go stream my music on all, so, um, all major music platforms. Are we there yet? It's out there. Um, and thank you so much for your time. Okay. And we'll have Skylar's information in the show notes on this video and also on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Skylar Reed, I appreciate you taking the time today. Yes. Thank you. No problem. And uh, don't be a stranger. Come back. Let us know what's <laughs> going on with you. For sure. <laughs> All right, it's been great. That's Skylar Reed on the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Miss Skylar Reed. You can find out more by Skylar on her website at SkylarReed.com, as well as on our website at BringBackSoulMusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at BringBackSoulMusic.com. Don't forget to check out all our merch at The Soul Shop at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.